the women today, you and me. Men aside, we shall discuss one other time. You are supposed to be a source of peace. Women are. Women are. Women are. You are a source of peace. So all the kavuyo that you're making today in this world, you women, all the chaos that you are creating in this community today, just know that you're getting out of your blanket, you're getting out of your bracket, you are actually living your own life. So every morning, whether you're single or you're married, ask yourself, am I a source of peace? You know what men say when they are out there? This can even be said by people who have four wives. How you're going to do it is going to be your style. Because how I provide peace is my style. And how you're going to provide peace is yours to think about. But a woman who is on this earth is a source of peace. What are men? What I don't know what the source of men is. I don't know what the men are supposed to give. But we said it one other time. Men are a source of provision. They like it. They don't like it. We are saying it today and they are telling us that we are working. No matter how much we work, men are a source of provision. So those are two things today that are conflicting in our relationships. The women are looking for provision. Actually, in that provision, there is security. All right? We are looking for security, and we are looking for respect, and we are looking for material things out of men. Whether they have failed or not, that is another thing. Whether women are not giving the peace, that is another thing. But nature provides and nature dictates that a woman is a source of peace, and a man is a source of provision. All right? So if we all understand that these things are not new, what your grandmother was looking for in your grandfather is what you're looking for today in the man you are seeing. It doesn't matter whether you are the CEO of MTN. It does not matter whether you are the MD of wherever. Every woman on her V8 steering is looking for a provision or a providing man. And similarly, the man is looking for where he can find peace. We have men who drive their big cars and they hide them in corridors and they go down there in the slums in a very ugly, stupid, small room where there is this woman who gives him peace. And they are living women in apartments or in flats or in very big houses. Because you are chaotic. <laughs> you are full of, you know, you are just, a, 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 what should we call it? A war zone? A war zone. And we have women today who are professionals. The minute you enter the home, problems begin. But that is not what we went to start it. We just wanted to see where these things are coming from. Today we want to talk about the basics of relating. It's unfortunate that whenever we are talking about relationships, we think about the man and the woman, the husband and wife. But we always have to remember there are so many other relationships that need to be taken care of. There are so many relationships that need to be put together to put right. Last week we had uh, a testimony of someone who has a problem with relating with her mother. Okay? So as we are going into these relationships, one of the basics that we need to look at so clearly today is what we call self-awareness. One of the basics of relating is self-awareness. Actually, I wrote in my book that I was trying to define myself. And when I was writing, I found that I was going on the fifth page, trying to define myself. Eh? 
And I was like, eh, this session shouldn't be about me. But a little of me. My name is Zaitun Kajam. Okay? I am a woman. <laughs> we have women who don't know that they are women. We have people who do not know that they are women. And we have men who do not know that they are. But I am a woman. I am a Muslim woman. <laughs> Today we have people who do not know their faith. She is here. She is here. You know? You know, ah, we can find God everywhere. Not so. Haven't you had people like that? We, we worship the same God. But you think God is crazy. Oh, God is crazy. He doesn't have a shape. He doesn't have clarity. He doesn't have a definition. So I am a Muslim woman. I am a Muslim woman. So when they're asking for a Muslim woman, and you know, they say, Muslim women come here and get five million shillings. I'll run. But there are people who will sit back. They don't know. She's called, you know, there are names that are in between, eh? And parents even do these things intentionally. Let me name her Sarah. <clears throat> you never know where this world is going. Let me, you know, we have Sarah, we have Adamu, we have, you know, those Moses. Eh? Mothers name their children, those names, because they know they, they are not even sure the father is a Muslim or not a Muslim. So whoever wins, the son will fit. I'm an African woman. <laughs> we have people today who live in between. Are they Western? Are they Eastern? Are they European? Are they African? Haven't you met such people? They do not know where they are coming from. How do Africans behave? Because one thing is for sure, the way an African relates is totally different from a European. Like it, don't like it. So if you're an African woman, are you coming from all over Africa? Are you coming from all over Africa? You want to say the West Africans are the same as East Africans? So Zaitun comes from East Africa, Uganda, Kampala. I come from Chagwe. My roots are in Chagwe. You just go Ginger Road, you get off Kawolo, you go there. They are supposed to bury me in Ngogwe. But because I am completely married, I'm going to be buried in Bukoma and Simbi, in Tuma. That is my husband's home. Some people are married. They don't even know where they're going to be buried. Recently, I was having an argument with one friend of mine. She has been married for over 40 years. But now, because things are not working well with their husband, she's like, Deva Sobola Nzekunzi Kaye, Sister, Sister Wada. But most of us, maybe a woman would think very fast that I think it is better to be mar you know, buried where your children are going to frequent. Have you thought about those things? So that whenever maybe you need some prayers, those who believe in prayers after death, where will, you, will your children be prompting? Their father's side or your side? Anyways, me, I'm going to be married at my husband. So when they are changing, changing things, you tell them, Coach said she'll be buried in Intuma. Where? Bukoma and Simbi. I'm a dark skinned woman. People do not know their shades. <laughs> On a wedding, she comes when she's brown. In office, she's black. When she's burying, she's beard. People do not know their color. Who can relate with someone who doesn't even know her shed? Today you have a date, maybe Valentine has just passed. She comes in when she's very brown. And then you're like, hey, I've been just walking around Kampala near your office. I thought we would have some lunch. Now she doesn't have the brown eh, because it is office. Then she appears like a mrugwal. So you should be very certain of who you are. If it takes you 40 years to understand who you are, take the 40 years before you start disturbing people. What is your favorite food? Mine is cassava. I love cassava. Bring it in any shape. Is it raw? Is it, I love what? What do you love? What is your favorite food? So that when they bring the menu, they've taken you out on Valentine, you don't ask for the menu. I will have the what? 
Bampeka meni wa kondo za kala ika kakula chi. Kika woma. You understand, eh? Because these things have really helped us in our marriages. Whereby, for example, me, soda, when I used to take soda, was crushed. Today, I don't take soda. Maybe when I just want to spoil myself a bit. But I've intentionally got off soda. Okay? But my best soda was crushed. Okay? Because I love lemon. If there are juices there, the melons, the, the passion fruits, the what? Me, I'm an orange, lemon. What is your best juice? What is your juice, you people? Lemon, put up your hand if you love. Yes, I'm a lemon person. Do you know that you're even good to take out if you know what you love? Before they even the waiter say, brings in the big menu or the, the CJs, eh? they have those very large menus. I don't, I don't, don't, don't disturb it. Just give me a cold lemon or lemonade. And then this guy is looking at this girl and, okay, this is a defined person. Now you open. Someone opens the menu. They open. They open. It's over. And then she opens it. Because you have not given yourself time. And you are looking for people to give you time. <laughs> what is your favorite color? Hello? What is your favorite color? Peach! Someone has been given a chance of an introduction ceremony, a wedding or something, and she cannot tell the decorator that, you know what, my, ooh, ooh, excuse me, my color is peach. So even this decorator is going to find her easy. Eh? She will be looking for the flowers that peach, clothes that are peach, everything peach. Eh? But you don't know your colors. You don't know whether you love bright colors. You don't know whether you love dark colors. You are just there. You are there. <laughs> and you think people are going to take the year? Wallahi, nobody. This is why people are using us. Someone takes you, chews you like a sugar cane, and throws you in the dustbin. Because you never appeared like what you are. So we are saying self-awareness. Consciousness of understanding. What are your feelings? What are your motives? What is your character? What is your character? Are you argumentative? Are you cold? We have the, the temperament that the, the focus tribe was recently having a very big uh, you know, engagement in the, the temperaments. Are you a sanguine? Are you a melancholy? Are you those plagues? Those things, eh? People think it is English. <laughs> but the day you know what you are, you will know who will not walk in your space. You know when some of us say that, me the type of man I want is a tall, dark, and handsome guy. <laughs> that is my test. So you walk in when you have those other things that I don't want to define, I will stay reading my book. I will stay on my phone. You will not catch my attention. But the girls of today, she loves the short, she loves the tall, she loves the fat, she loves the abs, she loves the, she loves everything. And you know what men have mastered? Hey, bring it on, they will take it, they will go away. So you find these girls, now they are getting out of campus, they are graduating. And you're asking her, mm -hmm, tell us, you know, for us when we were at campus, things that, you know, the radar was like this, eh? You're in your books, but again, you're looking around for a, eh? the taller, dark, and handsome, eh? But this girl has six men aligned. I just want to know me, I tell you, hmm, kind of there are around six people. And you're like, but since here are six people, they all fit in what you want. Yes, Hajat. And you've said yes to all these six people. You're promising six men. Do you know what it means to pay for things that have been given to you by six people? You know, sometimes men, you must pay their things. Now, if these guys rally and they say that this month, these girls are getting out of campus, most of the time when they are getting out of campus, they change character. Katisawa ya kutusa sula. And then for you, you have 10 aligned. 
And we see them crying on graduation. We don't even know what they are crying for. And so, where do I start? <laughs> I start from, she's thinking of how she has to pay 10 men. So self-awareness, people. Self-awareness is one of those things that is very key. For you to relate with your boss, for you to relate with the person near you, for you to relate with your children. If you know that you are very, you know, we have people, someone, one thing, she's slapping you. If you are this very person who, you know, gets off when you're angry, you know that now you, when you're starting to get angry, you move away from your children, you move, move, quiet, you tell them, okay, let me go to my bedroom, because you know you will kill your child. Okay? If you know you're this kind of person who is quiet, because these are characters. You don't know how to drive your points, Bambi. You know, somehow, and women, we have this thing. We have a problem of delivering our messages. You know, we have so many words, but we never make sense. Why do you ask yourself? You speak so in the morning, you make noise, you call when he's at work, when he's back, you make the same noise, but you in you, you come and tell me, Coach, the man does not understand me. Okay? So maybe you're this kind of person who speaks so much, but there is no. Remember, yeah, you get it. Eh? So we are talking, we want to take a lot of time. About you understanding what your motives are. <laughs> what are your motives? When you come to hold my hand, what are your intentions? When you get near this man, if you're relating with this woman, what are your motives? Because if you understand your motives very clearly, you have a plan. Chinechwala, Motives. And then the woman is like, Oh, you know that you have found this man and your motive is I am done with getting men. This is the man that I have. Me, I'm done. Hmm. <laughs> I always share and tell people, this guy who married me, the first day he saw me, he told me these things that are not very, I don't know what, you're going to, you know, you'll define them anyway. This guy told me that I'm here, I want a woman to marry. First encounter. Seeing, oh, you know, you're beautiful, you're the most beautiful Hey, then I would tell me. Then you would tell me that I'm beautiful. But this guy did mention the beauty, the beach, the, all those things. Probably he's saying today to keep me, hey, because today he needs them to keep me. But the guy told me that I'm here looking for a wife. I'm not a chips person. Can you imagine at campus someone telling you that he's not a chips person when chips are the in thing? All girls that you you know at campus even today they've been you know they've been messed. Because of chips and chicken. So this guy tells you, I mean, I'm not a chips person. Me, I'm looking for a wife. First year, second semester. See, we take it and a bit together. Then, why do we take it? No, because I'm a bit together. You know, you have a sovereign. So I was like, okay, you're looking for a wife. Mm, as me, I'm not looking for a husband. Uh, but maybe after school. And he's like, you, you mean you want to finish school? Yes. Okay, I'm going to wait. And I'm like, you're going to wait? Okay, I will see. Because many had come and they had not waited. So what is your motive when you're relating with this person? Are you using? Are you manipulating? Are you growing? Are you sharing? Do you, are you looking for a shock absorber? You know, people come in our spaces and they just want, to, they're looking for someone to say, you know, to lift their garbage and they put on you. They've not come for any advice. You're like, I so call in the car. Whoa. Uh -uh. She doesn't even want to put a, she doesn't want to put a comma. She just, she has come to just power and walk out. 
And you're like, but, but I, was, I wanted to tell you our, our, the things that maybe we could do. I had a session a wedding. Mm? So are you looking for a dustbin in these people that you are relating with? One thing I know about us human beings, except when we've just forgotten, we have a sixth sense. We are able to tell. These are the things that people call the red flags. All of us are able to tell that this person wants sex from me. And women, you can tell. Nahimwekoza. And then, but Hajat, this man, the only thing that he talks about is wanting to, but you know it. Why would he go and leave all the men around and then he comes to you? He wants sex. The question is, your motives, are you in need of sex right now? We always ask the young women, so he wants sex, which is okay. But do you want sex now? And they don't even know. Abachala abariwano. How come we all fall in the gaps of men's sexual, you know, their sexual rages, their sexual, you know, needs? Or we all you're going to shop. Actually, your head is aligned to something very different. And then we find you in a lodge giving sex. What happened to us? The I didn't even intend. Can you, 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 you don't know how men can be clever. You know those men. I don't even know how men even know these things. I don't even know what he told me. But seriously, 20 years, 21, 22, you're 20 years and above. So what we are discussing today is that self-awareness. Bichebi kunyiza. I don't like men who kwesesa sesa. Me, you just, you just turn me off. You know a man who is, <laughs> I don't like. And of course, the women who are too tough again, are maybe sometimes I what? I turn off. Eh? Then we do not want women. Actually, women who have, you know, who are chatting, chatting are nice, eh? But if you fall on a man who is always talking, who loves men who over talk? Put up your hand. One of the things that is disturbing people in their relationships today is these men who are talking with every woman. Not that he's, you know, flirting or he's maybe chasing them or cheating, eh? But you have this husband of yours that who has a phone book full of women. And he has conversations with every each and you know every each of them. Who loves such kind of men? Yenge mbozi ye ya eh? But you know, women like me. Why don't you understand? Huh? Why don't you understand? So uchiche chikunyiza. And then the opposite is what makes you happy. These things of gone are the days when they told us, you know, the singers used to tell us that mana wange, omwamyo ino muyiza, muyiza katunda, chokaya galale moninga zaituni. Ah, tetuchaiya. Ask this person, what is that thing that if I did it, it would take you to the moon? Okay? What are those things that make you super, super happy? You do not know. So you have these people gambling on you. You know, they are gambling because you don't know. So they don't know even how to make you happy. And in the extreme, what makes you feel loved? What are those things that when they are said to you, you feel when like this guy, uh, this man will steal everything of mine. Do you know there are women who are doing dumb things? There are men who are doing dumb things because these people who are near them, they know the words they want to hear. So don't, be, don't cry when your man is kind of playing around. They can't steal people. Me, I don't believe those things. They stole my man. Ah, ah. They 
they can't steal a human being. They are simply doing, saying, you know, there's things that your husband loves to hear. <laughs> Today, I, I somehow the uh, video of uh, Pastor Serada came into my space, eh? and he was telling people that you tell your women I love you every day. But do we want to be told I love you every day? Do you? No. I don't like that. I, I don't. You tell me I love you in the morning, even in the evening, even in the afternoon. No, 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 no. I don't know. Maybe there are some people who want that. Hmm? Who loves it? I love you. I love you. I love... No, 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 no. <laughs> that is a video. It is, it is on. You've seen it? It has passed. It is there. So the thing is, we need maybe a journal. Coach, I think we might have to do something like that of self-awareness. So that someone has this book where she fills in these deeply rooted things about themselves. So that at the end of the day, when you're walking these streets, it's either that person who fits it or don't disturb. So that people don't get disturbed. People have started relationships of two hours. Yes. You know, someone says, you know, hi, I think I like you. Is it okay if we have a, a cup of coffee? And you're like, you know, girls these days say yes so quickly to someone whom they don't even know. So they go for a cup of coffee, and before the cup of coffee comes to the half, the guy is like, hey, this woman is full of trash. You get eh? Simply because you come in, you don't even know how to walk. You don't even know how to walk. Because a person who knows who they are cannot walk when they are bent, bent. You know, you're like, you don't even know where you're going. You know, when you know who you are, you know where you're going. You know the time the date is. It is 6 p.m. The cup of coffee is 6 p.m. You come in at a quarter to 6. You sit there. And he comes in. Because the latecomer is the one who bends themselves. Not so? So what are those things? They need to be very clear. So that you don't waste your time and you don't waste people's time. The other thing that we need to have as a basic, as a basic of your relationship is your relationship with your creator. Mutuyambe. If you believe in Lubale, please close the gap. If you believe in whichever you believe in, close the gap between your creator. Because one of the things that is disturbing relationships is to, today is because people do not care what God says. You just want to undress for anybody. You want to undress anybody, anywhere, anytime. But whose religion allows people to have sex before marriage? Put up your hand. Just put up your hand. That for us at Rubaga Cathedral, we are allowed. At Namirembe, we are allowed to do it. And then you come in and you disturb us. Two sluts, two prostitutes. And you think you're going to make peace together. You can never. You can never. These are things that are not going to lose trend. Virginity is a trend. You like it, you don't like it. One of the things that is disturbing people today is simply because, you know, they undressed anyhow, anywhere. You know, you met and in just two hours you were in an apartment. Of course, it was hot sex and everything. You and it was on top of the, uh, the mountain. And then you think you're going to maintain it through marriage. You are never going to do that. Because one thing is for sure. Whenever you look at this man, <laughs> you know what you remember? You remember him undressing for you when you left your mother in the garden. <laughs> you get, eh? All of us, all of us, because these are things that are happening. Maybe they've even happened to you. But you know that the day you undressed for your man, whether he's your husband today, is the day you dropped the trust. 
Your husband was your teacher. Your husband was your boss. Okay? Your husband was your client of sorts, right? What comes into your mind? Hello? He told you, you know, you're going to take these papers, eh? You know where you put them, not so? You take these papers, and then the papers became papers. Okay? So whenever, you know, you, know, you were a student, and you left the school, right? But the teacher husband stayed in the what? In the school. So whenever he is at school, your heart is like, oh God, oh God. Banange, our God deserves his respect. <laughs> our God does not have sex. He doesn't marry. He does not give birth. He doesn't eat. He doesn't need all the things that we are doing. But all the things he told us that do are for our own good. And all the things that he has told you don't do, they are the ones that are causing us issues. No matter where you go, even though you go to the most sophisticated counselor or coach, even though you pay a thousand of dollars, we are not going to answer those questions. But if things have not gone the way you wanted them, because we, want to, we don't want to say that we are angels, <laughs> can you find some time and seek forgiveness? We talked about forgiveness yesterday. That was last week. Can you find time and tell your creator that, you know what, my God? <laughs> but sincerely, between 19 and 30, I've been a very bad boy. I've been a very bad what? But can you please forgive me? You know? Because our God has the ability of turning around. Turning around a very bad person into a very good person. We have seen this. We have seen prostitutes making the best wives. Not so? So if it has not gone the way it is, you know, you were, you were very energetic, you didn't even know what you were doing, you were duped, you were drugged, you were, eh? Can you find space and say, oh God, please forgive me and give me a better chapter. Then lastly, the third ingredient as we wind up is projection. Can you think of where you will be with these people that you are fighting to relate with five years from now? Will they be making sense anyway? You are fighting for women. You're fighting for men. You're killing yourself. I was reading that... Uh, oh, my God. I am going to remember. I'm actually, they were saying that temporary people do not need permanent feelings. Who has seen that? Temporary people. The people who, who are just like... You know, you go to the bank and you just get your money and you walk away. Don't attach yourself to people who are temporary. That woman, a receptionist, who is going to be here and tomorrow is not going to be. Yesterday, I was haggling with an Ascari. I have a space uh, I'm at. I wanted to record from there. So I didn't want to move. I was even hungry. So I wanted to use a chair, the Ascari's chair. But I, the Ascari didn't want me to use the chair. And I looked at this gentleman. And he's not a permanent Ascari. He's these Ascaris that come in and, you know, they, 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 they distribute. Eh? I looked at this gentleman and I was like, you know what? I don't want to take this chair by force, but I'm going to take it. That is what I told him. Because the chair is even going to stay longer than him. So projection, these people that we are relating with, which value are we attaching? This gentleman that is in your space, do you see a husband in him? Do you see a father of your children in him? Can you project a little? So that you don't waste a lot of time. There are people who come in and they show they are very temporary. Akugambira wo. The siwasa. A man comes in, he has already given birth to his children. His children are out of university, and for you, you're coming in, you want six children. And he's like, And you attach. And you? 
attached. And so many other things that we are putting wrongly on people. And then they are hurting us, yet it is us who have just laid our hearts bare. So me, to me, those three things are very basic. They are not going to change. For your grandmother, for your mother, for you, your children and your grandchildren. Who you are, what you are with your creator, and what you see for your future. So I want to stop here. Thank you very much for listening to me.